I just picked up another speaker project yeah, that I'll take a look at. These are EPI Model 100's two-way bookshelf speakers. Got them at a local independent uh, thrift store here in uh, Arizona. And these were priced at, what, $3.99 a piece. So, $8 for these guys. I haven't tested any of these at all, but of course it looks like some definite foam rot here on the 8 inch woofers need to be refoamed. It has like a reverse uh, dome tweeter appears. Hopefully those things still work. I might check those out, put a frequency in and see if I get any noise out of them. But uh, yeah, those woofers need to be refoamed, no problem. Should looks like a standard size uh, foam. Maybe pull those out and see if I can get a date code off the back. But I think these are from somewhere around the mid 70s. East Coast speaker made in uh, Massachusetts, I believe. So well, let's try putting a tone in with the tone generator and see what we get. There's a good way to test these speakers if you have audio frequency generator handy. You can do it with an amplifier too, but I did check. Uh, uh, the resistance of these and it, both of them read a, about 4 ohms which is looking I think straight across the woofer so at least that's good and uh, I've got the tone generator hooked up so let's crank up the volume you can see we're getting low frequency I can feel the woofer There's very high frequency coming out of the tweeter. So, that one's good. Let's hook up the other one, see what we get. There's high frequency, that woofer's putting out some noise. There's low frequency. I can hear the woofer, you can hear and feel it going, so. That's good also. So great. Uh, all four drivers on these are good. Just need to be cleaned up and uh, refoam those. I think they're 8 inch woofers. And uh, these old uh, EPIs should be up and running again. And they need some cleaning up. They got a little bit of damage here in certain areas. Uh, I've got I usually just color this in with a, a pencil of the right color and we'll clean up the sides and the front get them looking better too then I'll order some uh, foam surrounds and uh, get them here there we go and another nice set of bookshelves see if we can get them all playing Pop the woofer out of this one. These are all completely full of fiberglass. And this, these have the old uh, square magnets, ceramic magnets, kind of like uh, some of the Advent speakers originally had. And the date code looks like it's uh, April of 1982. So that's what these, where these are from. So I'll go ahead and uh, do some measurements here to make sure I get the right size foam and get that on order. Got both the drivers pulled out of these EPI 100s and both of them have uh, similar date codes. One looks like it's September 27th of 82. This one, I can't really read it, April something. Of 1982. So, similar time frames. Again, both of them uh, need uh, to be refoamed. Again, most of the, the original foam just kind of fell off. So, I tried to clean these up a little bit, get the dust off, 
and I will use my razor knife to start peeling the old foam here off the basket. Now, normally speakers have uh, gaskets right here. Um, they're not really needed if you're not mounting them up against you know, a plate this way, but uh, normally they do. These do not have gaskets, so that's how I'm going to put them back together. Just glue the foam straight onto the basket and uh, remount them. So let's get started on refoaming these. I ordered the foam from Simply Speakers. They had the uh, actually exact spec foam that uh, EPI used on these woofers. So it cost a few bucks more, but I went ahead and ordered that kit rather than the standard 8 inch kit, which would have fit and worked. But here I get the right foam. Apparently, that foam is a little more, uh, um, I don't know, it's softer, more movable, more compliant. So uh, I figured that's what they originally had. I'll go back with that. All right, the first step to uh, refoaming speakers is to get the, uh, I use this type of little DeWalt uh, razor knife. You can pick these up at Home Depot. And you have to get in here and scrape away the old foam, just like this. Uh, when you glue down the new foam, it will not stick to the old foam. So you got to get down to kind of metal. You can leave some of the glue there. But uh, you want to get that old crusty foam off. It's not hard. It's a little scraping. So you can see, about like that. I'll scrape that a little bit more and get that down to bare metal. I'll go all the way around uh, the edge of the basket here and. Scrape all that off. And I'll be back. I won't make you wait. Watch the whole process, but that's what I'm going to do. All right, a couple of passes with the razor knife, and you can see the mess that this makes here. But that's gotten the majority of it. And I'm going to go back here and just try to clean that up a little bit more. The other thing you can do too is uh, alcohol will kind of. Uh, Soften up that glue. So if you want to just take some alcohol and paper towel and go around here, clean that up a little bit, and check it out, and yeah, it looks like it's mostly mostly good. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect as long as you're down to kind of bare metal. You know, the new foam and glue will stick to that. That looks pretty good. So now, the more delicate process is to remove the old foam from the paper cone. So, you can try, try scraping that and you can see how, yeah, there it is, it's kind of coming off. So, I'll do a pass, I'm just lightly scraping here, I'm going to be careful not to cut that paper cone. They're not super delicate, but you, know, you can't go crazy on them. Okay. That got off the majority of it. Now what you can do also here on this is right around the edge, just take some alcohol and dampen that old foam and glue. And this softens it up and makes it come up uh, fairly easily. Let's do that. Then you can go back with your razor knife. And you can see I'm getting a little bit more you know, stuff up here. So just a light scrape. Okay, that's about it. That one's uh, pretty much ready for new foam. 
it's actually easy to do when these uh, when the foam is really deteriorated like this it just pretty much crumples off um, so that's that one I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this one and then they'll be ready for the new foaming kit all right here's the uh, repair kit from uh, simply speakers very quick uh, shipping I think I only ordered this a couple days ago maybe three and they're from Florida so all the way to the west coast in three days not too bad so we're ready to start uh, refoaming these speakers get them back in the uh, cabinets and hear what they sound like all right here's the kit you get you get two uh, foam surrounds and the special glue uh, that you use. Uh, I really like this stuff because it's really fast drying. This is the MI 3035? I don't know what that says. Yeah. Uh, good stuff for working on speakers. So this foam is actually uh, a different blend than the, the normal uh, foam kit for 8 inch speakers. This one's specifically uh, made for these uh, EMI speakers or EPI. They, uh, I guess it's, um, it's a softer compound or, you know, allows the uh, driver to move a little bit uh, easier and quicker, more compliant. But anyway, they seem to fit almost perfectly. So, uh, go ahead and get them installed. All right. So the way I do it, I think the recommended method of putting this is to turn the foam upside down. This is what they call the angle attach. So because this part of the foam is angled in and there's no ridge up here this goes straight at an angle. So in that case it's recommended that you just flip the foam over upside down and use the speaker as a little turntable. And then put like an eighth inch bead on the foam. Use your finger as a guide along the on the edge of the speaker to kind of get you steady. And if you have any dry spots, come back and add a little bit more. That looks pretty good. We'll recap that. Take your finger and just kind of spread this out on that angled part of the foam. enough right over here so I'm just gonna go back and we add a little bit more there we go okay that looks pretty good now flip this over Place it down on top of the speaker, getting the foam centered on the old glue line of the old foam. Right about like that. And you lift up the uh, cone so that it touches the foam and just kind of get it pressed in. This stuff sticks pretty quickly. So it doesn't take too much. Sticks quickly, but you've got time to kind of move it around if it's not on there just right. And I'm just 
just put my finger, other finger behind, lifting up the cone just a little bit to, so I can push the foam down on it. It's looking pretty good. Now I can get a little bit of a little tool here or something to help you out if it's your fingers are sticking to the glue if you got too much on there just kind of push it down but you can sometimes get them on get glue on your fingers but that's just about it right there that's sticking down pretty well now that's step one now this will take yeah, 15, 20 minutes to kind of really cure. So I'll wait that length of time to before we go to the next step of the process, which is gluing the foam down to the frame. I'll come back in about 15 minutes and we'll do that. Okay, this is ready for the next step. I'm just going to lift up the uh, foam. Let's see, it's well attached to the cone. Put a bead of glue down here on the frame and then stick it down and go ahead and center the voice coil. Let's do that. Now if you hear uh, uh, chainsaws in the background, I've got doing some uh, uh, landscaping out there, so pardon the sounds. So this is just the same as before. You just lift this up and do a Put a bead of glue down. Right here on the edge of the frame. Kind of stick this down here. A little messy, you can see the glue kind of squeezing out. Centering tests here. Poke the cone in and out and see if see if it's centered, which it is. Not hearing any scraping. So we go ahead and keep pushing this foam down into the glue until it cures. Occasionally checking. Make sure there's no rubbing, voice hole rubbing and this is sounding pretty good. So that's it. We'll just let that uh, cure up. And I'll come back in about 15 minutes when it's done. There's one thing I want to try to capture. I'm doing this other one. You can hear. When I press over here, it's rubbing. So right there, it's rubbing. So that means the foam needs to come this way a little bit. Pull it over while the glue's still wet. Now I press on both sides and I don't hear any rubbing. Top bottom. So, so that's kind of the process. You look for the sweet spot here, right where you don't get any rubbing. And that's how you get her centered. go. Got them installed back in the cabinets. I'm going to let that glue uh, cure up 
for an hour or two before I plug them in and play them, but I think they're going to sound good. All right, got the speakers mounted up there here in my workshop. So, uh... sounding pretty good. I'll listen to them for uh, a few days up there. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with them, but I do want to uh, recover the, uh, the grills here because I can see that it looks like cats have been scratching at it. There's some holes here and there, so I've got the material. I'll redo those and maybe repaint this. I think that's supposed to be a gold color. Let me repaint that to make them look original. But they're looking pretty good, sounding good, and uh, so that will be the end of this video. Again, this is uh, some EPI Model 100s from uh, early 80s, 1982. Save uh, the recycle bin. And I can live to make sounds for another 25 years or so. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.